Hi there. If you are watching this video, then most likely you are interested in the field of home appliance repair, or you are an active master who wants to reach a new level. In our case, a new level is the repair of electronic modules. My name is Shukrat, I am an electronics engineer by profession and part-time owner of the Fixer Plus Service Center in Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan. Our craftsmen perform from 10 to 20 on-site repairs every day. And I, as an acting electronics master, repair hundreds of electronic modules per month. Something turns out to be restored, we buy some electronic modules for spare parts. And in this video I would like to share with you, so to speak, my experience that I have accumulated during this time and touch on the topic of learning. At one time, when I was just starting to repair household appliances, structured information and online courses, which have now become widespread, at that time there were none. Or if they even were, they were colossally expensive. In this regard, I flew to Moscow, passed literally five days of training there and realized one very big important problem. Unfortunately, the teacher and the student talked to each other in completely different languages. In our sphere, in the sphere of repair, not everyone comes from the university bench, savvy in technical, technical terms and so on. Or, for example, they come to our field from professional technical schools. And when the teacher tries to explain something to the student, so to speak, in technical language, appealing with such terms as a potential barrier, a PN transition, a microcontroller, microprocessor. Unfortunately, not all the guys even understand what is the difference between a microcontroller and a microprocessor. Or, for example, what is zero and one in digital technology. And that's exactly why many guys don't have any results. And someone does not even understand at all why he came to these courses, while giving a lot of money for it. Therefore, guys, in this video we will try to tell you all this in simple languages. That is, I will try to convey to you all these technical terms in a simple language, so to speak, human, so that you can understand exactly the essence of the electronic module. So that if some kind of payment is brought to you for repair, you understand what parts it consists of, where to start diagnostics and, accordingly, how to repair it. And in order for us to speak the same language now, we need to go through the following topics with you. And we will start with you, perhaps, with what an electronic module is, what varieties there are, some features of various electronic modules we will look at. For example, from the same microwaves and, accordingly, some nuances. Any electronic module is the main control part of household appliances. It is needed in order to manage all processes. For example, in a washing machine, it will control the washing processes completely, that is, from the water inlet to the temperature measurement from the sensors. Accordingly, looking at the electronic module, when you look at it, if you have not had any work experience before, it will be a little scary for you. Because there are various components, what they do, what function they carry behind them, you don't know. But over time, intuitively, you will already understand what is responsible for what, even without knowing what kind of module it is. So, for example, on this module I see with you what? I see we have a transformer, I see we have a relay and I also see relays, these are the high power relays that are standing. Accordingly, they commute a large load with us. Perhaps some shades, fans, blowouts and so on. This particular board is a control module from the Electrolux dishwasher, an industrial dishwasher. Accordingly, these relays include large heating elements, circulation pumps, and so on. Actually, on the electronic module, on this textilite, we have soldered soldered tracks and soldered places where radio components are installed. Naturally, there is a place for each radio component. You and I can observe, so to speak, even in the center, yes, in the most prominent place of the chip. The biggest chip, most often we have a microcontroller. A microcontroller is like a human brain. Now in more detail in further videos we will analyze what it is, how it works. Next, we see the power supply, that is, this part here is the power supply. The part of the electronic module that supplies the necessary voltages for microcontrollers, for switches of these relays, and so on. 
Looking at the electronic module, you and I see thin tracks, such as hairs that we have going from one part to another. These are tracks, only conducting tracks. In fact, it can be represented as wires. That is, imagine if, for example, there were no such tracks, then the board would be cluttered with a huge number of wires. Here, that is, if, for example, you have some kind of breakage of the track and it is possible, this track can be restored, for example, with an ordinary wire or some kind of wire. This board specifically, we also have a two-layer, that is, there are single-layer boards, there are two-layer ones. This is a two-layer board. Please note, there are tracks both on this side of the board, and we have tracks on this side of the board. That is, here they all are. And it often happens that in order to connect any tracks on both sides, wells are used, yes, through holes. And, for example, in washing machines, in desert is a common disease when wells, for example, rot due to high currents, corrosion, there are any shocks, vibrations, and so on. And it is necessary to ring these tracks and look for just the same place of the cliff. This is what concerns the payment from the dishwasher. Now I will show you the boards, for example, from the microwave and you will understand the difference. Here we have an electronic control module from the microwave. You and I immediately see a small display. Here we have seven segment students. Semi-segment Niki, they are most often used just the same in order to display numbers. Here, why are seven segmenters called? Because we have seven segments involved there. So, depending on which microcontroller gives the command, we will have different numbers or letters appear here. Here, this is a single layer board. Please note, we have these tracks on this side, but we don't have any tracks on this side. You see here a naked textilite. Here, respectively, what else can we see here? We can see a separate fee with you. This is called a subboard, yes, a separate power supply is soldered on it. Here, that is, there is no difference as such, that there is a module from the washing machine, that from the dishwasher or from the dryer, from the refrigerator. The same radio components, the same components and the same principle of operation are used everywhere. Accordingly, we had a module from the microwave. And in the repair they will not differ from each other in any way. Now let's look at the module, for example, from the fryer. That is, here we have a module, it was brought to us from the restaurant. This is an industrial fryer and you can see what a small handkerchief, but at the same time it controls various nodes. Here we also see seven segment displays, we see a small microcontroller, control buttons and, in fact, it's all the same as the previous boards. The board, again, we have a two-layer, here, that is, there is even a speaker that signals various errors there, for example. And finally, we will analyze with you the electronic module from the Indesit washing machine. This is our EVA module of two generations. There is also EVA 1, there is Arkady 1, 2, 3, there is Windy. In fact, the Indizites have one of the widest lines of electronic modules. That is, in fact, these modules were reliable, but they had a disease in the fact that there are wells here, as I have already said. That is, you can pay attention, these are the control points, these are wells. And if, for example, you are trying to find contacts, call them. If, for example, this well does not ring, respectively, we already have a problem there, a break, we need to repair it. It's the same here, we see a large chip, this is a microcontroller, we see another chip, an amplifier, we will also talk about it with you. Also here we see a switching transformer. Here we have a power supply unit and power relays that control the load of our heating element, pump, motor, reverse and so on. Actually, friends, we will deal with all this now in order with you in the following topics. Typical malfunctions in electronics. Guys, we can share with you all malfunctions in electronics or electrical engineering conditionally divided into three types of breakage, short circuit and some kind of software failure. Let's start with the first one. What is a cliff? A breakage is when an electric current stops flowing in our circuit due to the fact that a conductor has broken somewhere, or as in our case, for example, a breakage. That is, at the same time, some conductor may be broken, or cracked, torn due to a large current, for example, or if any of the circuit elements fails. For example, I think in childhood everyone had such garlands that were sequentially connected. That is, each light bulb followed each other there. Roughly speaking, they were connected in series and if one of the bulbs burned out, respectively, 
neither this whole garland shone. That is, just the same there was a breakage of one of the bulbs of one conductor and the whole circuit was de-energized. That is, the breakage is characterized by infinite resistance. That is, here it is P, which tends to infinity. P is denoted by resistance. Here. What could be the reason for the breakage? That is, the breakage usually happens due to some mechanical damage, due to corrosion, due to vibrations, or, for example, the current has increased, for example, some element has figuratively burned down and the current stops flowing. That is, this is our first, the first type of breakdowns, malfunctions. The second is a short circuit. I think very often you have heard the phrase yes, there is a light in the house closed, yes, or some element closed there. A short circuit or short circuit is yes, that is, it is characterized by the fact that the current in the circuit increases sharply. According to Ohm's law, the lower the resistance, the higher the current. That is, just the same in the circuit where there was a short circuit, we have a sharp increase in current. Here in this simple example, I have shown such a jumper, which just closes the whole chain on itself. That is, if we conditionally imagine that we don't have this line, we have an electric current flowing, a light bulb is on, but at some point the current finds the shortest path, for example, water got in or fell, for example, what kind of conductor fell on the contacts and there is a sharp surge of current and fails often a power supply. That is, what causes a short circuit? A short circuit occurs due to the fact that, for example, the capacitor on the board has dried up. Yes, it has dried up, the electrolyte has leaked out and closed the circuit accordingly. With a short circuit, the elements of the board are often visible immediately, that is, they are charred, burned, what else happens to it? Explodes. For example, the varistor, which we talked about in our previous videos on the channel, it is just its function to immediately reduce its resistance at the moment of a voltage surge and increase the current in the circuit. The current in the circuit increases, the conductors burn out, that is, the varistor bursts and protects us, that is, it saves the rest of the board. This is what we have with regard to the short circuit. And the third, so to speak, type of malfunction is a software failure. Well, it often happens that if there is some kind of jump in the network again, some interference went or, for example, you abruptly pulled out the socket during, more precisely, the plug of household appliances during operation. It happens that the program crashes. Yes, someone says the firmware has flown off. Yes, this happens there, or it also happens that the processor mask falls off and then it needs to be reprogrammed. Here, this is a software glitch. A software failure is usually treated by the fact that the user is offered to turn off the device and turn it on again, well, that is, to do a simple reboot. In our case, we often treat software failures by flashing the controller. Actually, friends, these are typical malfunctions and we need to be able to distinguish them. What is an open circuit, a short circuit and a software failure? For ease of understanding and repair of electronic modules, we need to conditionally divide the electronic module into two parts. This is our hot side and cold side. What is the hot side? The hot side is our high currents, high voltage. For example, the power supply is the hot side, since we have 220 volts going in there. Also, the hot side is where we have some kind of powerful load. For example, fuel tank, engines, pump and so on. That is, for example, how can you determine where the hot side is, where the cold side is? The hot side is this part, that is, the power supply, power relays, chokes, filters, and so on. We also see some radiators with you. Figuratively, if I saw this board for the first time, I would understand that the elements that we have on the radiator, they consume. That is, a high current flows through them, which heats this part and this part needs to be cooled somehow. Accordingly, that's why there are these radiators here. In this case, this radiator is mounted on the motor semis tor. Since the motor consumes quite a lot of current, the semis tor needs to be cooled. Here. And what is the same cold part? The cold part is exactly the low voltage part where we have a microcontroller, memory chips and so on, there are amplifiers. Actually, in this way, it is always important for us to understand in which of the parts we have had a malfunction, in the cold part or in the hot part. 
Often in practice, we always have problems in the hot part. That is, these are filters, these are diode bridges on fire, some kind of breakage resistors, semistors, transistors, and so on. Now I will show you another module, on which we will also try to find the cold part and the hot part. The control module of the washing machine at land. We can see the power supply, respectively, this is the hot part. We have 220 volts coming to these two chips. This is our program selector. By the way, friends, for the future, if you, if you bring an electronic module with a selector, where there is a choice of programs, then 220 volts are always connected to this selector. Now let's see where the cold part is. We turn the board over and see the cold part with you. Here it is. Here it is even visually visible that here we have very small SMD parts, a microcontroller, various registers, small SND transistors, semistors, and so on. And here we visually see that there are thick tracks, respectively, we know that there is a large current flowing here. This is just the same 10 switch on relay. And it is visually visible that we have a large current flowing here, respectively, this is our hot part. And also these semisters, which control our valves, drain the water and, accordingly, close the door for us. That is, this is the cold part, this is the hot part. If, for example, my washing machine constantly drains water, even when it should not do this, then the first thing I will check is the drain pump circuit, in particular the semester that controls the drain pump. When repairing electronic modules, you will often have to repair power supplies. When are they usually repaired? Well, they bring you a control module with a malfunction, it does not turn on, that is, there is no power supply. Roughly speaking, the equipment simply does not turn on absolutely. She doesn't show any signs of life. The first thing you will check, of course, are some protective elements, and there are fuses. Well, most importantly, you will check the power sources. And in this case, you need to understand the differences between linear power supplies and switching power supplies. Linear power supplies they were used, so to speak, earlier, and pulse power supplies, they are already, so to speak, more modern technology. That is, now after I explain this to you, I will show you illustrative examples. So, what is a linear power supply? Linear power supply, we don't have any digital components. That is, we have, so to speak, an ordinary transformer that is connected to the network. Step-down transformer. For those guys who don't know what a transformer is, it's a device that can turn 220 volts into either 3, 5, 16, and so on. That is, it can lower the voltage, lower the voltage, or increase it there to tens of thousands of volts, and so on. That is, here we have a simple block diagram, 220 volts of mains voltage goes into the transformer. After the transformer, for example, it goes down. Let's conditionally take up to 16 volts, as in the example of a washing machine. After that, these 16 volts get to the rectifier. The rectifier is what equalizes the sine wave, equalizes the alternating voltage. The alternating voltage is often represented in the form of a sine. That is, plus minus, plus minus, plus minus. It changes 50 times per second. That is, what does the rectifier do? It just aligns this sinusoid. After the rectifier, which is often a diode bridge, power is supplied to the smoothing filter. The smoothing filter is an ordinary capacitor, electrolytic, that is, and after that we already have power to the stabilizer. That is, here you had 220 volts, turned into 16 volts, straightened up, went to the smoothing filter, that is, we smoothed out all these pulses, that is, almost to a straight line and we have these supplies on the stabilizers. Here are the stabilizers there are different 3 and 3 volts, 12 volts, 5 volts, and so on. Here in our case there will be 5 and 12 volts, but more on that a little later. What, let's touch on more disadvantages. In linear power supplies, the disadvantage is often the size, that is, they are very dimensional. Overall, expensive. That is, to find a transformer now, for example, it will usually require large monetary investments. So, next we go, switching power supplies. Switching power supplies are a little more complicated in execution and people always strive to reduce the dimensions of any components. It was the transformer that was reduced here. If you compare a linear and a pulse transformer, you will see, by the way, the difference. They are simply different at times. 
but in order to compensate for the size, it is necessary to increase the purity. And here is a very important difference. If in a linear transformer we first lowered the voltage and then rectified it, in a pulse transformer we first rectify it, then we do it. We cut this rectified constant voltage into pulses, into a very large number of pulses, that is, the purity of the purity of the operation of these transformers is 10 times higher, that is, there are kilohertz. And in a simple household network, we have 220 volts 50 to 60 hertz. Accordingly, when we cut these pulses into a digital signal, roughly speaking, into a PWM signal. In our case, the inverter is a PWM controller. Then now we can already do what we want with these impulses. That is, roughly speaking, these pulses arrive at the power transformer. The power transformer just lowers the voltage we need and the output filter is filtered. We also have feedback. Actually, these are the main main differences between pulsed and linear power supplies. The advantage of switching power supplies is that they are fast acting, they take up very little space, respectively, and in reliability they are not particularly inferior to linear power supplies in principle. That's also cheap, that is, PWM controllers, pulse transformers, they are very affordable. Now I will show you a visual difference between these power supplies. Here is a clear example of the difference between control modules with a switching power supply and a linear power supply. I think you have already guessed that the linear power supply is this one. That is, we see with you a large network transformer. Here even he has an output voltage of 16 volts, that is, we immediately get 220 volts of power to the primary winding of this transformer. 220 volts went in, transformed, that is, dropped to 16 volts. Next, we have a diode bridge, it turns out these 16 volts into a pulsating, pulsating direct current, which enters our filter and after this filter we already get almost a direct constant voltage. After that, we have these 16 volts coming simultaneously to the stabilizers of 12 volts and 5 volts. That is, here we get a stable 12 volts, here we get a stable 5 volts. Why do we need a stable 5 volts? Since our microcontroller is the cold part, accordingly, it consumes a stable 5 volts of the low voltage part. And we need 12 volts in order to switch various relays. Now let's pay attention to the control module of the Atlant washing machine. That is, it is also a pretty good module, condemned for quite a long time. And what was the problem here? Well, the problem was very simple, just cold soldering, which we fixed. But pay attention to its power supply. He only occupies this place. Here it is, here it is the power supply. What do we see here? We see with you a pulse transformer. It's very small. Compared with a linear transformer, the difference in size is at least five times larger than a pulse transformer. And we see an inverter with you, just the same PWM controller that cuts us this constant voltage. That is, it turns a constant voltage into pulses. I think you've often heard the word PWM controller. What is PWM? This is pulse width modulation, that is, it is not just a sine wave, but a PWM signal. In the future, we will see what it is. That is, our power comes to the selector 220 volts, goes to the barrel, turns here already, more precisely, it first straightens this voltage, then turns into 320 volts of constant voltage, goes to the PWM controller. From here these pulses are already cut by a pulsed pulse transformer and after we already have output output capacities. Actually everything, you see, friends, a very simple, very light power supply and in repair it is very, so to say, unpretentious and, accordingly, its repair is much easier and cheaper. Actually, friends, I hope you understand the difference between linear and pulsed power supplies. If you see a PWM controller, you already know 100% that it is a switching power supply. Let's move on to the next topic. In order to move on to the next topic, which concerns microcontrollers and memory chips, we need to figure out with you what types of signals are, what is an analog signal and a digital signal. I think each of you has heard what it is, that there is such a binary system that includes a 1 and a 0. Here, but we will start with analog signals, since the digital system did not appear immediately. 
So, what is an analog signal? An analog signal is a signal that changes over time constantly. That is, it constantly has some specific values. Well, for example, take the strength of the wind, yes, their meteorologists measure some kind of wind strength and their graph will be figuratively like this. That is, at any given moment in time we have some kind of different value, which can vary in the range of any values. Or, for example, the volume. Volume is also an analog signal. The voltage change is also an analog signal. That is, if I turn the volume control knob, my resistance changes. For example, there were 0 ohms, 1 ohm, 2 ohms, 3 ohms, and so on. That is, when you turn the knob, the volume control knob, you change the analog signal. Here it is. That is, this is an approximate graph of how an analog signal might look like. What is a digit? A digit, a digital signal has only two states. Two states are 1 and 0. That is, how can we characterize, for example, the lighting in the room? That is, it is dark, that is, light, there is no light, this is a zero. Turned on the light, we have a unit. Agree, it can't be that the light is half on, half off. That is, figuratively, there is one and zero. For the microcontroller. It is very important for the microcontroller that the values are discrete. There can be no such thing as zero, zero as many as five, one, and so on on the microcontroller. This is not how digital technology works. The signal is either there or it is not. That is, the digital signal graph looks like this. Now, in simple words, let's talk to you about what a memory microcontroller and amplifiers are. After we have sorted out the types of signals with you, it will be easier for you to understand the principle of operation of the microcontroller. I will try to explain this topic with you, explain it to you by example and by analogy with the human body. Let's imagine that I need to lift this tweezers. The thought that I had about lifting this tweezers, the tweezers themselves will not lift or even move it from its place. I need to strengthen this thought and, accordingly, use what this tweezers can lift, that is, my hands. In this case, the microcontroller plays the role of the brain. That is, here it is a microcontroller, it is the central brain of any electronic module. That is, here we form signals that are necessary for any board to work. That is, in order to turn on the relays there, to accept any to accept any data. For example, a person also has, roughly speaking, their own input and output ports. Example, I'll give you a simple example. For example, a microcontroller has input and output ports. Input ports, for example, what do they do? They take on information from any sensors. That is, what kind of input port can a person have? Then it's the eyes, he sees the world around him, so the microcontroller does the same for us. He sees what is happening in the washing machine by receiving the necessary signals from the sensors. By the way, I'll run ahead and tell you how a microcontroller differs from a microprocessor. You may confuse these concepts. A microcontroller is a ready-made component, a ready-made complex device that can be used in your project. Inside it there is already a microprocessor, a ROM, a storage device, I.O. ports, various amplifiers, and so on. There are numbers, analog converters, analog digital converters. A microprocessor is a separate device that performs only mathematical operations, it does not have any additional devices. Actually, we return to our analogy. And so, suppose that the microcontroller should turn on, for example, a heating element in a washing machine, yes, it's time to heat the water. How will he do it? On one of the ports that is responsible for turning on the heating element, we had logically we had a logical zero, that is, there is no power supply. Zero volts. But as soon as the microcontroller, according to its firmware, according to its program, has to turn on the 10, we have a logical unit at the output of this port. The logical unit, in this case, will be equal to 5 volts. That is, the microcontroller will read these 5 volts as a logical unit. We have 5 volts, but 5 volts cannot turn on the 10. Therefore, we need to amplify these 5 volts. In this case, we have amplifying cascades. Amplifiers can often be either transistors or ULN transistor assemblies. In our case, because they are common in boards, you will often meet them at 2003, about LN 2004 and so on. That is, we have a logical unit of 5 volts, then we go to the amplifier and these 5 volts turn into 12. 
Why? Because LN has a chip, it consumes 12 volts of voltage. That's it, we have 12 volts. It's like a key like this, 5 volts came in, 12 volts came out. Everything has intensified. Now these 12 volts can already switch the relay. That is, here is the switchboard. 12 volts switched the relay, and the relay already directly switches and switches any load. It doesn't matter if it's a heater, it's a fan or, for example, well, any device that you need or there's an engine, for example. Accordingly, here is the whole principle of operation. That is, our microcontroller consumes 5 volts, gives us signals, and all this happens synchronously. In parallel, it receives information from various sensors, monitors leaks, and so on. That is, in simple words, the microcontroller is the central link of any electronic module. I think the analogy is clear with the fact that a thought cannot, for example, move this tweezer and, accordingly, this thought is amplified in us, and our hand can already lift this tweezer. The same goes for a relay that can switch a serious load. Here, I hope it's clear, guys. Now we turn to memory. In order for the microcontroller to work, to work according to a certain, according to a certain instruction, according to a certain algorithm, it needs memory, which will contain all this instruction. Here. Memory is a special microcircuit. Microchips that store data cells in themselves, that is, they store data with which the microcontroller constantly communicates with us over data buses. Accordingly, what are the most common memories we have, that is, memory chips? Well, this is PROM. And PROM, roughly speaking, stands for volatile memory, which is erased using an electrical signal. Well, these are such complicated abbreviations, of course, but in fact everything is simple and they are very easy to program. Often, in the modules for washing machines, we use memory chips of the 24 series of 24TS, this is our PROM. This is roughly speaking, a simple flash drive. That is, you can take by analogy that this is a regular flash drive where you write your firmware. Everything, that is, here we have the configuration, which model of the machine, what programs it has, how to erase these programs, and so on. Accordingly, we have memory chips. That is, everything is simple here. You connect, if you figuratively program them in the future, you connect here with a programmer, fill in the necessary firmware and it will work for you. Now we turn to the amplifiers. In order, as I have already explained, to amplify the digital signal, to amplify it, we need some kind of amplifying cascade. It can be either a transistor, or, as I said, a transistor assembly. Here. That is, the point is that our low potential turns into an increased one, at least 12 volts, which can already switch our switching. Actually, friends, we are finishing this now and moving on to the topic with firmware. What are firmware and what are programmers? What is firmware? You can often hear such a phrase as the firmware flew off, you need to flash the module, and so on. Sometimes inexperienced craftsmen, not understanding what the problem is in the washing machine, for example, without checking any peripherals, can conclude that the firmware has flown off. And in fact, this may not be the case. The firmware rarely flies. What is firmware? This is a set of commands, that is, a program code that prescribes exactly the algorithm of work. For example, close the door, pour water. That is, we have it all spelled out in this code. In fact, if you disassemble the firmware, it turns out to be such a large binary or hexadecimal code that it is not considered simple by a simple person. Therefore, we have such devices as programmers. Programmers are, so to speak, intermediaries who connect exactly the memory chip in which all this firmware is stored, the program code is stored and connects it to some programming environment. For example, with a computer program, the same flash programmer or USB DM and so on. That is, I showed you the most common programmers here. This is Sasha 341, AVR program, USB DM. Sasha 341 is programming the memory chips that we reviewed in the last topic 24TS. That is, the 24TS series perfectly programs with these programmers. AVR is a programmer, he programs the AVR series Otmolovsky microcontrollers. USB DM is our in-circuit programmer, which can be programmed by the Frykolovsky microcontrollers. That is, they are used there in electric suites, in Zanussi, in Indesites in Arcadia and so on. 
That is, in fact, this whole topic is simple, so the words firmware and programmers should not be afraid of friends. The algorithm of board diagnostics. Well, guys, let's now move on to how any electronic module is diagnosed. The first and most important thing is our visual inspection. That is, we need to examine the module very carefully. That is, it happens that malfunctions occur immediately. In the future I will show you vivid examples. That is, a visual inspection allows you to identify more than 50% of breakdowns there. You can see a swollen capacitor, you can see a burnt track, a charred resistor or an exploded varistor, for example. That is, all this is determined visually. Here is the second stage, we have already checked the protective elements. That is, some modules have breakage resistors, fuses, thermal fuses, and so on. That is, we need to call these things. That is, if you have, if you have brought a module with a defect, for example, it does not turn on, then you can immediately ring the fuse that you see at the input to the circuit or varistor, for example. So the third stage, respectively, is checking the supply voltages and checking the elements. That is, it will be necessary to measure the voltage and ring the elements. For example, to ring the integrity of the diodes, check the power supply on the input mains filter. That is, often there should be 320 volts, if it is a switching power supply, as I have already said. If it is, for example, a linear power supply, then you measure the output voltage from the transformer, measure the output voltage from the stabilizers. If this is a 12 volt stabilizer, then, accordingly, the power supply should be 12 volts. If it is a 5 volt stabilizer, then there should be exactly 5 volts at the output. That is, it is important to understand these things. And often all these three stages will be quite enough for you to repair most of the electronic modules that will bring you to repair. Well, for the next topic, we will just see in practice how this is done. Well, guys, I hope you are not tired of theoretical knowledge and now we are moving on to the most interesting, we are already moving on to practice. This module was brought to me for repair today. This is a Samsung Diamond module with a problem that somehow incomprehensibly manifests itself. That is, the washing machine can open the valve once, pour some water and get up. At the same time, it does not issue errors. Then sometimes, that is, she can pour water and stand. That is, when checking the entire periphery, the ten, the engine, the brushes, and their pumps and so on, everything is perfect, the cars are about four and a half years old. And in fact, this breakdown is very common on LG washing machines and we have a ready-made algorithm for how to repair it. And now I want to share this algorithm with you just the same. Here we will proceed directly to the disassembly of this module. What do we need to do? There is one small problem in these modules, Samsung, LG modules. These modules are filled with a compound, like this silicone, which just holds the board, does not allow us to open it. Therefore, we will need to approach it from the reverse side. Now I will try to open this board and show you how I will get to the radio components. That is, guys, this is how our module looks like. And now I will find exactly the area that is responsible for the engine. Looking ahead, I will say that in the service test, this machine gives an error of 3E, 3E, this error is related to the Tacho sensor, that is, the machine does not see the engine speed. Here. But here everything is more prosaic and simpler. We will need to open with you the part where we have a 7-cylinder engine. That is, returning to our past topics, we see the module with you, we see the power supply with you. Why the power supply? Because here we have a pulse transformer, we have a barrel here, this is a network capacitor, we see the PWM controller, and the motor control relay, we have a throttle, filters, and so on. Here we have power relays that turn on the 10. 10 and commutes the phase. That's it. Now we will need to solder this part. Either unsoldered or cut off. Now I will specifically mark with a marker where this is our place. That is, we need to open this square here. There are two ways, so to speak, of autopsy. You can take a soldering iron, for example. I often use an old Chinese soldering iron like this. 
With such a sting, we simply heat it up and solder it out accordingly. What is the disadvantage of this method? The fact is that when you solder plastic, there are a lot, a lot of harmful gases, because there is such a strong smoke, plastic burns, it is harmful to health. But the convenience is that it is done quickly. But today I will use a special drill. We will now carefully open all this and I will already show you directly what we will do with you after. So, here we see the compound with you. It is very important to remove it carefully. I have met very often cases when inexperienced guys were picking with a screwdriver, that is, yes, you see, I have tweezers here, which, more precisely, 500, a blade with rounded edges. Accordingly, these edges will not damage the tracks. If you pick it with a square shovel, or with a screwdriver, you will spoil the tracks. We all open the place of the semis tour. Here we see three contacts. Right now we need to get to them. Guys, after we have cleaned the contacts of the semis tour with you, we will need to solder the third control electrode. With the naked eye, it is not always possible to notice an annular crack around this contact, but it does take place. And when the machine behaves exactly this way, just the same, all we need to do is solder this contact with our solder a little. It is better, of course, to solder the whole semester at once, just in case for the future, but keep in mind that it is the manager who needs to be soldered, because such problems occur because of him. It was I who shared with you, so to speak, one of the secrets of the masters. Here it is not often told. Here on my YouTube channel I have already made a detailed video about this breakdown. Actually, that's all, we're now soldered. It remains for us to clean this place so that there are no unnecessary traces of flux, solder, and this completes the repair of the board. Also in this video I would like to share with you how I repair the control module of the washing machine in Desert Generation Arcadia 3. This problem is very common when bearings wear out and, accordingly, in the future, the washing machine starts to break down when turned on. What does it mean to break into momentum? You set any mode, the machine locks the door and when the signal for engine rotation comes, the machine immediately starts rotating at maximum speed and at the same time gives an error. Very often it looks like a malfunction with an old sensor, but when you check, you find that the sensor is intact. In fact, the following happens. We have a sensor circuit on our module that burns out. Now I will try to show you in detail which resistors burned out and how we will do this repair. The repair is very, in fact, simple. Let's get started. So, friends, I removed the radiator on which the seven-cylinder engine is installed so that it does not interfere with soldering. That is, here, here, we will show it separately in close-up, here we have burned out resistors that we need to replace. The ratings of these resistors, there are two large and two small resistors. The big ones marked 562 are 5 and 6 kilo ohms. The second small resistors, which are also in parallel with the marking 202, we get 2 kilo ohms, now we need to replace them. After determining the values of the resistors, all we have to do is replace them. Here we have a total of four resistors, two 2 kilohms and two 5 and 6 kilohms each. I will use such resistors in such a package. They can be ordered from China. So, let's get started. To begin with, we will apply a little plus, so that our temperature is evenly distributed and these parts can be soldered systematically and evenly. It is possible to solder both with a heat gun and a soldering iron. I prefer soldering with a soldering iron, 
that is, it is not necessary to use a hair dryer here, because they are also perfectly soldered with a soldering iron. Just warm up evenly on both sides and the resistors will eventually move away. That is, the main thing is not to overheat. That is, everything. I have already released the first two sites there. We remove and there are still two resistors left. To make it more convenient, you can first get these places soldered. Now I'm going to solder with my solder. I will already drink it out. So, guys, I soldered off these resistors. Now let's use a copper braid to clean up the seats. Actually, we proceed to ceiling. To begin with, we'll grab a little. We grab a little resistors. And it can already be sealed. So, guys, what did I do? I replaced it turns out two pairs of burnt resistors, installed 5 6 kilos and 2 and 2 kilos. Actually, that's it. After that, just in case, I rang these two sections so that we would not have any solder ingress anywhere. That is, during soldering, you may not notice how solder has dripped somewhere and this solder, respectively, will cause a short circuit. That is, if my tester started beeping, would understand that somewhere I did not catch up with something and I need to fix it. Everything is fine here, so we install the radiator back and put everything in place accordingly. So, guys, I shared with you a simple repair, a template repair. Why were there few dimensions here? Because the repair is a template. Such repairs have been done many times and it is already clear step by step what to do. Here, actually, friends, that's it. And now I want to show you and tell you a little more about what stands are for work and how the control modules are usually checked after repair. Colleagues, I also often see in the comments the question of where to check the electronic module after repair. They say that some necessary special stands are needed. In fact, what is a stand? The stand is a regular wiring. That is, you can take this wiring, that is, or by washing machines of different models, for example, this is specifically the wiring from the washing machine in Desert Generation Arcadia 3, which we repaired. That is, roughly speaking, all you need is just this braid. Someone sells them separately. That is, you can find these braids on various resources. They are sold there from a thousand rubles and above. Roughly speaking, you buy up various transactions, sign them. For example, we have Arcadia Arcadia 3, you will also have Arcadia 2 and EVA the first, EVA the second. You buy wiring on a washing machine LG, Samsung, and so on. That is, over time, with experience, you will already have accumulated a large number of such goats. And all you will need after the repair is just to take an indication from this wiring, that is, from this module and, accordingly, the power module itself. You connect everything as in a washing machine and run it. And on this you can go through the whole cycle. That is, all you need is just wiring. Therefore, you should not invest a lot of money in buying some stands, which are very often now starting to be sold on the internet. That's all you need, that's just it. Therefore, friends, buy a washing machine, they are inexpensive, they are affordable and collect these braids. Well, colleagues, I hope that after watching this video, all these complex terms and concepts have become more accessible and simple for you. And if you like this video, if it was useful for you, please write your comment, put a like. You can also share it with your colleagues, I will be very grateful for this. I also have a small announcement. If you are watching our YouTube channel, you probably know that we have an online course on washing machine repair for beginners. This course is step-by-step, step, complete, that is, 
after completing this course, you can already start from scratch, so to speak, for yourself, discover a new field, such as home appliance repair. And more than 200 people have already completed our course. You can read all their reviews by following the link in the description. These guys encouraged me to write down a course on the repair of electronic modules, because it is a very big request. As far as you know, the repair of electronic modules is valued and paid much higher than some simple ordinary repair. For example, to replace the shade or pump there. And I decided that this course will start at the beginning of November this year. And the course will be held in the format of video lectures. That is, we will have with you, it turns out a separate chat with the masters of video lectures. And the trick is that this course will be regularly updated, supplemented with various new videos. For example, if I repair some board from LG, for example, with a de problem, I will take it all off and put it into access accordingly. And you will already have a kind of cheat sheet, a video memory about how I did it. And you can copy, so to speak, my actions, my measurements, diagnostics and already apply them to your repair. What about the cost? Given the current events, given the situation, the cost of the course until the 31st of October will be fixed. That is, if you make an entry now, sign up for the course, we will fix the price at 10,000 rubles. After the announcement, after the start of the course, that is, in the first days of November, the price will increase exactly twice. Therefore, friends, if you are interested in this course on the repair of electronic modules, then welcome. Sign up using the link in the description, write to me in Telegram, I will explain everything to you in detail. Actually, friends, that's it. I hope everything was useful and understandable for you. Shukrat, the Fixer Plus team, was in touch. Bye, everyone.